Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Sonoma 14 Beta 7. This is available to developers and was released a day after many of the other updates that were released this past week. With iOS 17 Beta 8, iPadOS 17 Beta 8, WatchOS 10 Beta 8, along with tvOS and HomePod OS 17 Beta 8. All of those are available now, as well as older macOS updates to bring up their security updates and more. Now, this particular update was not huge. It came in at 1.29 gigabytes. That's on a MacBook Air and also a MacBook Pro. And this update offers some significant updates this time around, something I would love to see on iOS 17. Let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple, click on About This Mac, and as you can see here, it says Sonoma 14. If we click on it, you can see the build number here, where it's 23A5337A. So we're down to an A build number, getting very close to a final release. We'll talk more about when to expect that later on. Now, this particular update offers some really nice updates in particular that we weren't really expecting. If we go to our system settings, within system settings, if we go down to wallpaper, Apple has updated this significantly. And when I mean significantly, 22 animated wallpaper have been added along with over 120 total new wallpaper. So lots of changes here, lots of dynamic wallpaper. So we have Sonoma, Ventura, Monterey, of course, going all the way back. And the nice thing is just like before, you have to download them. They're not installed by default. So if we go all the way back, you'll see there's 31 of them here. For landscape, we have the Sonoma Horizon one. We have Grand Canyon. I have to download that one. We have Patagonia Mountain, which I just had. I really like. We also have Sonoma Evening, Sonoma Clouds, and you'll see Show All 47. So tons of different ones here. Iceland Lake, Greenland Evening, Apple's really gone out of their way to add a ton of different wallpapers and they all animate as well. So I'm not going to go through every one of course, but if I lock the screen, you'll see it starts to animate. And then if I unlock, let me try that again, I'll lock, it starts to animate, it moves a little bit. There we go, it's starting to move. And then as I unlock, it kind of slows down. Super nice wallpapers this time around. So we have all of those. We have Scotland Lake and many more. We also have a bunch of cityscape updates with things such as Dubai Skyline. We've had some of these before. Many of them are on Apple TV as well. So New York Skyline, it takes a moment. You'll see it's going to download here in the background, take a minute and then it will apply it. So San Francisco Skyline, New York Skyline, we'll give it a minute to download and see what it looks like. You'll see it's almost done here. It takes quite a while to download it. Maybe that's because they're huge files, but let me move this out of the way. Let's see if this one animates. We'll lock it, try that again. So we're locked here and you'll see it starts to animate. We're moving toward the skyline. So that's great. We'll unlock it and then it sort of slows down. Again, all super nice updates as far as screensavers go and wallpapers. So it kind of is both in this case. And as you can see, Hong Kong Harbor, Hong Kong Skyline, and then underwater, we have 21 new ones as well. California Dolphin Pod, we have Barracuda Battery, and much more. I'd show you more of these if they didn't take so long to download. If I click on Gray Reef Sharks, you'll see it just is really slow. If we go down to Earth, we have a bunch of different ones here with Antarctica's Southern Lights, Europe Nights, Nile Delta, and many more. It's super great of them to do this. And again, I would love to see them add something like this to iOS 17. We have Shuffle Aerial. So we have a bunch of these photos with Shuffle Cityscape, Shuffle Underwater, Shuffle All, which is really nice. I'll probably have it Shuffle Landscape, but it will take a while to sort of download those in the background. If we go to pictures, we've got all of the ones from the different Mac updates and more. So tons of really nice updates here. And of course you can go to the basic colors as well if you'd like to do that. I really like this Patagonia one, but I'll just leave it on random and have it shuffle on its own. So it's great to see them adding a hundred wallpaper. I don't think we've ever seen Apple do that before. So hopefully they add it in future updates. Now, something else I wanted to point out that I didn't see, but some others are seeing is the first time you boot up macOS Sonoma Beta 7 when logging in for the first time, Aaron P613 actually had it say, choose your wallpaper. Maybe because I already had this wallpaper selected, it didn't show me that, but some people are getting this dialogue to walk them through choosing that. One thing I noticed in this update that seems to have improved, at least for me, is when you're actually typing with predictive text. It seems to predict what you wanna say much better. So I'll open up Mail, and maybe we say, 
hi, how are you? You'll see it, just type that out. I hit space today. I hope you are doing well. And you'll see it started to type that out. We are going to go to the park or nearby park. Sometimes it predicts it very well. So you'll see as I type, it sort of learns this over time and hopefully it gets much better. Would you like to join me in New York? Let's see if it gets it. It auto capitalizes it, but it doesn't get city. So that's one thing that it seems to be getting much better at. It's been predicting text much better this time around. One other thing I noticed is the widgets seem to work really well if they're on your iPhone. For example, there's two of them here for the cars that are actually on my iPhone. These are not widgets that are actually on the Mac itself. So that's something that works really well. And of course, it's showing battery life and more from different devices. So I really like that they've implemented this. It seems to work much better in this update and it worked almost instantly and I didn't have to do anything. It, it's not even open and I'm not using these widgets on my iPhone. So they just sort of show up here. As far as the release, notes are concerned, there's quite a few things here that have been resolved. Now, this is actually a public facing website. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. And there's over 50 resolved categories of things they've fixed. So 52 in particular. So here's one under general users might experience a blank screen with an active cursor for an indefinite period of time when attempting to update to Sonoma beta six. So that's an older issue that they've resolved with beta seven. There's many more and there's only eight known categories of known issues. So they've fixed quite a few things here. There's some things about new features, but They've resolved issues with Freeform, iCloud, iCloud Drive, and much, much more. Tons of known issues here that have been resolved. And if you're still having issues and it's not listed here as far as a known issue, make sure you report it in the feedback app so Apple can take a look at it and get it resolved. Now, as far as bugs they've fixed, well, I haven't noticed anything specifically other than the widgets seem to be working better. But one thing I wanted to mention is from Nico on Twitter here or X, and you'll see here, I Nico 110 said Mac OS 14 beta seven seems to have fixed an important issue I had with beta six screensavers while on display, they called caused huge process usage and lags. This seems to have been fixed in this update and they've really refined the overall processing of just having those animations run in general. I've been using this for a couple hours. It is super smooth to use as far as performance going into different apps actually feels faster than using my M one ultra that's on Mac OS Ventura. So going into things like settings, going into Safari, minimizing, going in and out of apps just seems to be super fast in general. This is definitely much better than I've seen before. So I think they've really refined it this time around and also battery life. I don't really use this off of a charger very often, but I thought we'd take a look. This is a 16 inch MacBook pro with an M one max in it. And you'll see here that it's typically plugged into a studio display, which there was also a beta update for. This is currently plugged into a pro display XDR just for recording this video. But if we go into battery health, you'll see I'm at 94%. This is a launch day, 16 inch M one max. I actually custom ordered, got it as soon as I could. And it's been on optimized battery charging and plugged in most of the time. So it will degrade on its own just a little bit, but it seems to be doing pretty well. Battery usage, you can see most of the time, it's just sort of sitting connected to something and will manage itself, but I'll drain it every once in a while. Apple used to say do that once a month, but I typically just leave it now where, where you have these new options with optimized battery charging and more, but it's been holding up pretty well as far as that goes. Now, as far as release dates for Mac OS, we could see a couple more betas or another beta and release candidate. We're not really sure at this point, based on what we have usually year over year, we'll see up to a release candidate and then a final release in October, usually after iOS 17 releases, we could get it the same day. We could get it later on. We don't really know, but we have that Apple event on the 12th of September. Then we'll have pre-orders for iPhone 15 and the Apple watches and maybe anything else they release on the 15th with a public release of those devices on the 22nd. Usually we can expect iOS 17 on the 18th or sometime around there, but they could change this up. We've seen them release it the day after the event as well. So we don't really know until they say, 
but usually we'll find out the release date of Mac OS at that event. So I would expect it probably in October. We don't really know, but we do expect another event there with maybe iPads and Macs. So we'll have to wait and see what they do this year. But at this point, I would expect maybe one more beta and then a release candidate before it releases. That release candidate will probably be sometime around the 12th. Now, as far as anything else, I haven't really found anything else in here. I went through all the settings, all the widgets and everything else, but if you've found anything, let me know in the comments below. I'll also see if I can link this wallpaper or see if someone's posted it online. If you want to check it out yourself, let me know what you think of Apple adding all of these wallpapers. I think that's super nice and would love to see them bring that to iOS as well. I know a lot of people miss the good wallpapers. Many of them have been kind of bland lately. So to bring back, not just these, but a lot of those landscape wallpapers are great. Let me know which one you like so far in the comments below. And like I said, there's 120 of them. So quite a few to choose from. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.